Brian from Automate Your Life recently challenged me to a little friendly competition to see who could save the most energy as part of his hashtag energy challenge. It doesn't matter who won, of course, but um, it was me. I won. And Brian enjoyed getting his ass handed to him so much that he asked me to do it again using only AOTech products. So AOTech have sent me nine AOTech products, and I only really need three because, well, the Canadian energy prices look like this. But when these devices arrived, I realized there was so much more fun to be had than simply saving energy, and one of these automations is something nobody else has ever done. Is that, um, that baited you in? Some say I am the master of bait. This whole thing has been master bait. Thanks to AOTech for sponsoring today's video and for sending me this plethora of smart home gadgets. In today's video, I'm going to show you some ways to save energy, but also some alternative uses for these devices that you never would have thought of. You see, AOTech's products are quite unusual, because almost all of them contain additional sensors that turn them into super products. This button, for example, is also a temperature sensor. This contact sensor is also a vibration sensor, and this motion sensor is actually six sensors all in one. And this is almost as surprising as that time that Leia fully Frenched her brother. I've always known. Up first then is the giant pause button you never knew you needed. I am always losing the remote control, and every time I get up to pee, I'm hunting around for the thing. Giant pause button, problem solved. This is a Zigbee button, and it's magnetic to boot. Its primary user base is of course SmartThings customers, but it also works with Hubitat and Home Assistant 2, assuming you have a Zigbee dongle such as the Con B2, which I'm using. Right, um, sorry to interrupt. It's just that if you don't press the subscribe button, then uh, I'm gonna tell your kids that Logan Paul's new energy drink is just coconut water. Morons. I know I've just called your kids morons, but uh, if you could press the subscribe button anyway, I'd appreciate it. Thanks, on with the show. <laughs> I added the button to my combi stick and was immediately able to create an automation in Home Assistant that says when the button is single pressed, then send the pause command to my Nvidia Shield using the Android TV integration. You'll also note that the lights came up to 100% when the pause button was pressed and went back down to 30% when I resumed watching the television. I'm achieving this by having two automations. One that says when the button is single pressed, set the lights to 100% and pause the episode. And another automation that says when it is double pressed, set the lights back to 30% and unpause the episode. What I'd like to do is have a single press that just toggles play and pause, so I don't have to remember to double press it on the way back into the room from my bathroom break. I'd also then like to have a completely separate automation that controlled the lights up and down, depending on the Nvidia shield, whether it is paused or is playing. I haven't managed to achieve this yet. No. Don't ask the Home Assistant forums, will you? It's perfectly simple! Climb inside the rabbit hole that is Home Assistant, discover that that doesn't make any sense and you need to climb into a rabbit hole inside the rabbit hole of Home Assistant, climb inside the rabbit hole that you find in that rabbit hole, where you'll find four more rabbit holes, climb into the fourth rabbit hole and die. True story, not a 
What a friendly bunch. But Lewis from Everything Smart Home is, and he is giving me a hand with this, and if you guys are interested, I shall do a tutorial specifically on getting this set up if you want me to. Let me know in the comments. And also, check out Lewis from Everything Smart Home because he's awesome. This button, though, does something I have never seen any other Smart Home button do. Not only does it have the usual single press, double press, and hold functionality, it also measures the temperature of your room. I know, completely mental. And so the second thing I've been able to do is save energy. Because radiator smart home thermostats turn the radiator on and immediately complain that they're hot because they're pressed up against a hot metal plate. Then they get too cold and they go round in circles wasting energy. I can use this little button not only to do fun stuff, but also to measure the temperature of my room to help me turn my Tado radiator thermostats on and off accordingly based on the actual temperature of the room where I am sat. I'm pretty proud of this one. Uh, this is one of the only contact sensors I've found that will work at this distance. It's quite a ridiculous distance away from its sensor, and yet it does detect that it's closed when I put my pad down and opened when I pick my pad up. In Home Assistant, I simply have a routine that sets the lights accordingly, turns on the Xbox, changes the AV receiver to the Xbox input, turns on my projector and lowers the projector screen, all thanks to my Broadlink RM Pro. And if I put the pad back down on its charging base, it just reverses the whole routine. This whole setup for me relies primarily on the Broadlink RM Pro, which doesn't work in Samsung SmartThings, sadly, and it's a real pain to get working in Hubitat, but does of course work in Home Assistant, which is what I'm using. You might have a completely different setup to me though, and you might find that you can trigger very similar things using this exact same method. The thing that makes this sensor stand out though is the fact that it's also got a built-in vibration sensor. This means that if you installed this on a door or a window, that not only would you be able to tell if someone had opened the door or window, you'd also be able to tell if someone was trying to break in. And for the purposes of energy saving, you could install this thing on a window and have an automation that says, if the window is open, switch the central heating off to save the energy. But, uh, you don't want to be heating the street unnecessarily. You're not gonna do that. You're gonna stick it to a control pad, obvs. <laughs> This very attractive glass-fronted remote is a Z-Wave device, and so you will need either SmartThings or a Z-Wave stick connected to your Raspberry Pi in order to make use of this thing. When I opened the box, I discovered they'd included a Z-Wave stick, and I wondered, will this work in my Raspberry Pi? Can I, can I just stick this in the USB port of my Raspberry Pi? Will it um, go in my Raspberry Pi? It will not go in my Raspberry Pi, <laughs> at least not immediately. I found that I had a major issue right from the off, but you probably won't. I think the difficulties I faced were because I already had a Z-Wave stick installed from a previous setup that I had. When I installed the AOTech thing, it took me a little bit of faffing around. I think it'll work straight away for you. For me, I think I always knew it would fail. I've always known. Mm -hmm. Shoot, shoot, brother, you fruit. What are you? 
Once the stick was recognized by Home Assistant, the Walmote quad paired straight to the stick and was able to start creating routines. My use case is simple. I have my hallway lights wired to be permanently on, and the button is just controlling Zigbee light bulbs. But there are three other buttons to choose from, and you could use one of them as a shutdown button to turn off your entire house at night when you went to bed, which would definitely save me energy because I keep waking up in the morning to find that I've left the gym on and the aircon running. If you have a smart home alarm system like the boundary alarm system I reviewed recently, you could use the controllers in Home Assistant to switch that alarm on at the press of a button before you went to bed too. So four buttons, lots of options. The Walmote quad can be clicked, double clicked, held and swiped to start individual routines. Though I have only found that I can click it. That's all I can do in Home Assistant. I can't see any other options. I have seen, however, people online that have managed to get it working in all of the ways described, and so... Climb into the fourth rabbit hole and die! The reason I like this little panel so much is because it looks really pretty, it vibrates to let you know you've pressed it, and it can be permanently powered via micro USB. And this brings me on to my summary of AOTEX products in general. Pretty much all of the AOTEX stuff works via micro USB. You can buy motion sensors that will work via micro USB, and they work much better over a long distance than, say, a Zigbee equivalent, and that's because you can power them from the mains. They can also act as a Z Wave repeater for other Z Wave devices as a consequence. The Multi Sensor 7 can be powered off USB, and this thing detects motion, light levels, how much UV daylight there is the humidity of your room and vibration. They are not the cheapest devices on the market as a consequence. You'll probably find also that they really have been marketed to your standard nerd. Standard nerds! But because they're Z-Wave, and because you can plug them in via USB and keep them constantly powered, you will find that they feel like a more reliable and more permanent fixture in your home than any of the Zigbee equivalents you've tried previously. As usual, there are links in the description if you want to pick any of these products up. Also linked to the description is the IFT Energy Challenge that Brian set, and an awesome playlist that you have to check out. It's all of my favorite creators talking about how they've saved money using their smart homes. I am one of them. There are two videos from me there too. Go check those out, and in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. That'll tell YouTube's algorithms. It was a good video, and more people should see it. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell. If you ding the bell, it lets YouTube know that you want to be notified when I upload videos. These incredible people running down your screen are my patrons from Patreon, and I say it every single week. I'm going to keep saying it every single week. Without them, I would be working in a call center. If you want to be one of those incredible people, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal, and either way, I will genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my Twitters and my Instagrams and my TikToks too. Come and hang out there and we can be best friends. See you next time. Wait, don't do that. That was bad acting. <laughs> this is a Zigbee button and it's magnetic to boot. As Brian, that's, sounds like Brian, a boot. <laughs>